Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be talking about the beautiful film Safe Place. We are joined today by director, writer, and actor Yuri Lerodic, as long with actor Goran Markovic and producer Milyenka Kogelja. And Yuri, I wanted to start with, with a question for you because you've you've written a story which is from an incredibly personal space and, and from your own personal experience, and and it really feels like in the execution of the film that you know. Having having that experience and having that personal emotion is part of what makes it such a beautifully affecting movie and and connects to audiences in the way that it does. Um, and so I was interested in in the experience of writing the script and and how you would probably in essence find yourself needing to lean into the emotion and le- needing to lean into your own memories in order to write this story to tell it the way that you have. I mean, I think after such an event. Um... Uh, you don't I think such event really erases a lot of stuff in you and you and you somehow you are just left on on that territory you know with with those topics and I think I started to write about it I I cannot tell you the real reason it was more a, a feeling and and somehow I just followed the feeling and I, I I think I like it that it didn't feel like an art project. I think that's always a good start for a project when you when it's not planned in a way this will be a film. It was just an interest that I didn't rationalize. I just uh, follow it. And the funny thing is that I, while writing is I was always telling myself, Oh, but uh, I'm not going to do a, a movie out of it. It's felt somehow too private and too painful. And um, I remember Slavoj Žižek, the uh, Slovenian philosopher, when they asked him how he published so much books, he said, "Ah, while I'm writing, I never think about that I will publish it. So somehow it gives some kind of freedom. And I think the same way I was a little bit like um, lying to myself. I was just writing and said, okay, but never will come something out of it. But um, there was some, uh, I think I was in a way, um, I mean, it's a wound, it's a wound. um, But also I think even to create, if you create something, even if it's from a wound, it's somehow beautiful in a way. I don't know how to say it and not to be pathetic. So because you're doing something, you're trying to 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 make something. And I think in a way I was also, it might sound strange, I, I was fascinated that, uh, you know, somehow that you, that life can so quickly uh, and so radically change that um, that you even love somebody you are in a way um, completely helplessness. You you can do nothing. So that was, I think it was like a reflex to write out of uh, write about it. Like um, I think I would write from the same reflex if something beautiful happened to me. But it was you know like so uh, so incredible, such a horror that I had to you know write about it. Maybe first for myself and then afterwards to to share it. I think. To make a movie is always like a dialogue, you know, a dialogue. Something happens to you and then you tell it. So so that was like I was writing, but just I, I think I needed a time to say, okay, that will go to an audience. You know, it was um, more something really private and quiet. And, and maybe that intimacy also came in the script, came from this point that I was writing it for myself, not for somebody else. Yes. And and Milyanka, um, you know, obviously you came on board with this project fairly early on as a as a producer. And so I was interested in in what that collaboration with you and Yuri looked like as the two of you were continuing to develop the idea of of how you were going to tell this story on screen together, along with all the other collaborators that became part of the team in telling the story. Uh <clears throat> Actually, I became became part of the project uh, a little later on uh, in the preparation of the shooting, uh, and for me that was the most intense period, intense part of the uh, of the project. 
um, it was um, a few. Um, uh, it was few reasons why we were uh, we were kind of in a hurry to hurry to shoot because we wanted. It was um, uh, it was uh, beginning of two thousand twenty one, and we wanted to shoot in the spring springtime because it was really important to us to catch that power of the nature nature in the springtime, and at the same time um, we need we needed enough time to uh, get Yurai uh, who is acting director first time uh, feature film uh, uh, prepared for the shooting uh, uh, enough prepared enough with uh, with the actors uh, 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 at the same time with the DOP at the same time with the uh, set designer uh, so it was kind of not enough time for the whole preparation and a lot of things to do so it was uh, most challenging for me is uh, was uh, 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 to get you I feel um, safe enough to enter uh, uh, to enter uh, shooting uh, uh, at the beginning of the July after only a few months of uh, uh, preparation pe period. Also, it was between two lockdowns, and it was uh, uh, and it was really important to us to be to shoot at the authentic locations in the in the split, also in the hospitals. And uh, we were um, trying to find uh, a location in the hospitals. Uh, uh, we, we 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 scouted all hospitals in the Zagreb and. Uh, uh, it, it happened to us that we find a location and the lose location this in the same day because hospitals need uh, we wanted them to uh, to let us with a crew of 20 something something people to shoot in the hospitals during the covid so uh, um, um, but even though challenging, it was really a um, uh, uh, small crew dedicated to the process and uh, uh, it was really great. Uh, working on everybody was on some like a like on some kind of mission yeah we were like on the kind of mission <laughs> yeah i mean spring was important for us because uh, we wanted somehow to show this as many uh, said this um um uh, nature this feeling of nature how big the nature is and um as you see in the first shot you see this uh, great uh, tree uh, which came out of nothing, out of the concrete. And it's like a metaphor. It came out from the concrete the same as um, the illness came, can come out of nothing. You know, it, you can do nothing nothing against it. And and also we wanted to show this vitality of the nature as a contrapunct to all this, what happens in the, in the movie. Yeah, so somehow it was really important to not to make this um, kind of uh, movie with uh, without colors in a way because yeah so so that was um, uh, spring was really a, was really a, a goal yeah that's so wonderful to hear and and Goran you know Yuri wasn't originally always intending to play the brother and and to play the part that's based a little bit on himself um and but I know that he he was the reader in all of the auditions um and so what did that change or open up or what did you discover in the character from being able to play against him in scenes and and from being able to have that really intimate connection not only with the fact that you know he could give you so many details about your character and, and the story and the way that he wanted to tell it, um, but even just the emotional connection that the two of you built together as scene partners. Uh, yes, actually, um, I, I knew his brother. He was my my friend, my best friend from childhood. So uh, I knew a lot of uh, stuff that happened, and um, but that didn't help me at all because uh, when when he wrote the script, I knew I heard about it, uh, and I told him that I wanted to be a part of the movie. And he said that uh, that he feels uh, sadly about it, but that he thinks that he didn't have a uh, didn't, that he doesn't have a part for me, and 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 that we have to accept that situation. And I said, okay, all right, but I I just wanted to be. A part of it, anyhow. I I wanted to. Uh, I said to him, I'll I carry stuff on the set if you want me to. I do anything. And then a few months later, he said, "Okay, uh, <clears throat> let's try it." And then he gave me the script. I read it, and then we uh, tried it for two days. 
Um, and after those two two days, uh, he didn't uh, re- try to cast anybody with anybody else, any uh, other actor, but just with me. And that process lasted then uh, six months or so. And after that, those six months, he finally said to me, uh, okay, it's you. But I mean, that, that pro- process was actually um, not just casting, but um, it was it, re- rehearsals. And through that period, uh, I got the feeling for that character. And um, I mean, it's a completely uh, different experience to watch somebody uh, in the eyes uh, that went through something like that. It's, I mean, I, I've never done anything like that, and uh, and I mean, and it's everything is so so tightly tied together that in this project that uh, in reality and fiction. Yeah, that any words you can kind of try to explain and try to be smart, it, it, it's it actually. Uh, is doesn't do it justice so um, but th- that experience was very important for me as an actor and as a person and and everything so I told him in, uh, during that process is that it doesn't matter to me uh, in the end if I would be in the movie um, it's it's uh, so good for me just to be in that process so, okay. yeah, yeah. I'm glad that he eventually decided to cast you in the role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. And and in your eye, in in the way that you have directed the film, you've kind of described the the way that you chose your camera shots as you want to make it feel like the characters just found themselves in the center of that shot. And there's a lot of scenes where there's maybe only one camera viewpoint for an entire scene, and and sometimes we're a little closer to the characters. You know, particularly when it's the two brothers, I feel like the camera is very much on their faces. But then there's moments where they're in the hospitals and they're talking to doctors and and you know maybe the camera's just outside of the doorway and and we're almost interloping and just watching in quietly from a slight distance um and so what informed the decision to have these very still very long takes and then where you wanted to bring the camera close and where you wanted to pull it a little bit further back for the audience i think we had uh, like the idea that we want that the characters are somehow caught caught in the shots that they are always uh, also with the framing that they can that they always is something so, some barrier they couldn't you know they're always caught in the shot they can't go out also with the choice of the lenses we try them that they're all but we try to create this distance that somehow the viewer um even if he want to intervene if 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 the viewer want to help us he cannot because there's this distance and i think that's the same distance we have um uh, as a brother, as a mother to him, this distance, we cannot help him. So somehow uh, Marco Brother, the DOP and me, we came to this uh, decision to to shoot it all like um, maybe it, people are used when they look at this documentary about animals, you know, they always shoot, shoot from the distance in a way. And we are just watching. And I think we, we try to create um, a movie, a style that is somehow silent but powerful because we have the feeling that we it's a uh, deaf is also such a thing deaf is very quiet you you cannot you cannot see deaf you cannot hear deaf so so we wanted to have this really um quiet but intense feeling i think from that point it develops um this this um this style but also in a way we didn't want to fall into this uh, slow cinema trap uh, where you um, don't have um really emotions in a way so so that that we didn't want to you know to have a dogma in a way dogma and in a way rules um rules if you once have a if we felt we have to go closer to the actor then we go closer to the actor but i think it was mainly in these interactions between the family because they are there is some really feelings and uh, and real feelings, so we wanted to catch them in those situations. But the doctors, there are the, um, these situations are somehow more alienated 
in a way. So, so from we always develop from the, the style from this um, um, from the characters in a way. We wanted somehow um, that the um, the outer space shows somehow the inner feelings of the of the characters. So that was somehow from the where the sky style came from but i'm not sure have i understood you right in the uh, question before when you t- told that i was sure that i will play the role a role from the beginning i wasn't sure oh yeah yeah you i i know that you weren't sure you were going to yes yes yeah. yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes I, well, I just wanted to add for that what you were saying the the, the framing and uh, the composition, I always feel like it added to the sense of uh, helplessness. Yes, because yes. you're you're there so so far away, and you kind of feel very helpless to help them. Uh, as the same as they feel uh, together in that situation. Yeah, we wanted somehow to create the feeling, even in those wide shots, that the characters are somehow at the mercy uh, at the space around them. That are somehow lost. Like um, we have those. I don't know uh, if you s- saw ever these architecture models. They have uh, their houses, and then there's small figures. And when you take the figures in the hand, they always have bags or something, and you ha- get, have a feeling of their comings and goings. But it all seems so pointless and so futile in a way. So we wanted to to recreate this feeling of of smallness, of helplessness. Yes. It's always when he told me about that story with those figures, uh, I had like a really uh, strong sensation about it because when uh, I was a kid and first time. I heard about religion and, and, and stuff like that. I always felt uh, that idea stuck to my head for a long time, that God is the one that is playing with us, like with those kind of toys, and that he does whatever he wants, and we are just like those kind of figures. So it really resonated with me. <laughs> and and Malenka, and coming back to you, you were talking before about you know some some of the challenges in in producing this film and finding locations and losing them and having to refind them you know i know it's very important for the hospitals to be authentic working spaces uh for the movie um but i also love that there's always happy accidents so the the scene where bruno is is running outside of the house and the camera is almost across the street there's there's a house that's been knocked down and so there's an empty lot across the road which in itself really serves the story um you know but obviously wasn't something that you were all looking for in a location or planning and so I wanted to ask you about what what were some of the happy accidents of things that ended up being a little bit different to how you all originally envisioned them but that actually told the story in a better way at the end of the day yeah that was one of the uh, one of one of the biggest shock on the of the shooting um <laughs> Uh, that street looked completely different than than it was uh, in in the end in the film. When we came to the location at the day of the shooting, we just realized there is no half of the street; it, everything is smashed. Yeah, I remember the sorry the the uh, the um, director assistant. He came and he said we have two problems: one smaller, one bigger. The smaller is we have a gigantic crane in the frame. And the bigger problem is that we miss a house. <laughs> Half of the street. <laughs> Great thing was that uh, DOP Marco Berder was really, he fell in love with that view. And he said it, it it's kind of, uh, it's even better. So we shot it and it looked really great in the end. Can you remember some of the similar situations from mm. the shooting? It was a great thing. For example, we have we have we had um, a guy who were looking for the cars for for through the whole process of the preparations. So Yura and uh, Marco saw dozen of different cars for the family um, in the film. Uh, he wa- they wanted the red one, uh, one big red one fam- red family car, and we were searching for for the one for months. And then in the end, uh, Yurai was walking uh, to the street and it was raining and he saw one that he really loved. 
and he said yeah that's the one and he wrote a note it was raining and he wrote a note for the owner of the car and put it in the uh, glove. A plas plastic glove from the from the uh, petrol station petrol station and put it under the um Windshield. windshield, yeah, windshield wiper, yeah. Windshield, yeah, for the owner to find it, and he actually find it and called us, and that was the car in the that was the family car in the in the film. That's that's incredible. I love that <laughs> detail so much. And 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 Yuri in in, in Goran, you know, I mean, Yuri, you were you were talking a little bit before about how small details can be so meaningful, and in this film you know there's there's a lot of quiet moments between your characters and you know a real delicacy in the intimacy between them and everything that they're going through and navigating and just the emotions between them are so strong you know but again just just very subtle and very quiet and you, you know Goran you were mentioning some of the rehearsal period before and I was just interested in how the two of you as scene partners and, and actors together in this really found how a a lot of the quietness could tell so much in a story. Uh, well, uh, he he wrote it in the script. Uh, my my uh, my character uh, has, I mean, in this in the in the script, there are a lot of uh, times when uh, he doesn't have any lines. There are just three dots in in, in this screenplay. And the challenge was to to fill it out, to 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 not be uh, too passive, because th there was the danger that uh, he's it would look like he's too too passive. Uh, but I mean, the process was, um, yeah. Th there is a thing I uh, during the process. I mean, I, at first I didn't know that he was uh, he would be the one who who will act the other, older brother but but i mean it was always like that he always uh, did it like he was the older brother and uh, he he told me the lines in, in a very uh, good and professional way although he wasn't an actor and there wasn't even i mean i had even the idea that he would play it i didn't know it about it I mean, even he didn't know it at that point at the beginning. But yeah, at, at, at the then I I got the the, the feeling uh, for the character for Damir through him through through those those rehearsals, and that was the the most the the most, the very best thing that. Um, uh, sorry. No. And we also get... tried to to make rehearsals uh, rehearsals on the uh, authentic locations, so maybe that was also easier for the, for them to feel the scene even more. Yeah, to I get mean, even deeper in the yeah. scene. Um, you try uh, at, um, at first. I, I wanted to research, do a research, and and to read books about uh, men mental illness and to talk to a to, to a doctor. Uh, but as soon as I was in the room with him, uh, and when I read the script, the, the script was so strong in its sincerity, it was so honest, that I, I, I felt like there is no room for that kind of... Um, yes, that kind of plastic, technical uh, acting. Uh, and uh, so the, the main thing was to get the feeling, and I got it straight away from him and as soon as i got it uh, i i the need for not I, I didn't act out of my head i just acted out of the feeling and, and then it was easy uh, to um, to fill those those vo those voids uh, within and i i wrote um inner monologues for every scene out so uh, it, it wasn't empty I mean and I didn't play him I didn't play Damir uh, like uh, he wanted to die uh, I played it the opposite uh, he, he he wanted to live the whole time he he wanted to live and to try uh, to figure out what is happening to to him in, and how to attack that situation and that problem and that helped me uh, to be uh, active as much as possible.
And yeah, I think the um, intimacy uh, yeah. and the silence between uh, the two of us came also from this long process of casting. No, because I I feel it also now when we sit to each other we don't have any you know I lean on yourself uh, on yourself and we are just at some uh, somehow very these borders disappear you know so with them um, but so so I think a lot came from it and you can feel it even if we are silent if we are not talking so I think uh, that was somehow the key um, also this period of time where we were just hanging out together and trying different things and yeah. yes without any we didn't have any also any timeline okay we have to decide we have to we were just trying to to make it as best as we can yeah. yes. i mean he i knew him before uh, but he was always the older brother of my friend i didn't we didn't interact so much yeah. and now we're like two buddies from the war that, that kind of went through all, all of this, so it's a pretty uh, natural, strong, strong mm -hmm. uh, connection. It's we don't think about it a few times. People told us you, you're all, you're so it's nice to see how you kind of you hug each other and stuff like that, but we don't think about it. We, it's it's so natural. Mm -hmm. That's so wonderful, and I, I'm sure this is one of one of the scenes that that people talk to you the most about. That I and I wanted to ask all three of you about just kind of how this scene came together and and how you made sure that it wasn't going to completely pull the audience out from the movie when you essentially you know break away the fourth wall and all of a sudden there's a different conversation that the two brothers are having and you know it, it's it's almost they're deconstructing their own story with one another um and it was it was a really beautiful moment for them to be able to have a very different type of conversation and in the way that the, the scene kind of gently leads in and then leads back out to the linear narrative um it completely carries the audience with you in the emotional space that you've already built um so i was just interested in and kind of how that scene came together, why it felt important and and what some of the challenges were in making sure that it really worked and you didn't lose the audience in that moment. Um, I think that uh, it came when I thought, when I had the material I wanted to write about and I thought about the dramatic structure. Um, as you told, is it would be something linear or something uh, fragmentary or how? And then somehow I it it felt for me uh, wrong that um, I thought just about how how can this uh, structure somehow um, mirror the content? So if the content is uh, trauma uh, and death and madness, um, how should the um, uh, the dramatic form be? So I thought it has to be something linear or something very dense but then with some hole in it with some rift because uh, like a trauma is also a rift in your everyday life so i thought how to disrupt the dramatic form the same as the life of the characters in the movie is disrupted so i thought okay i i experiment with different strategies but it all seemed too baroque too and i i thought this uh, breaking of the fourth wall is the most raw thing you can do in a way and um, so I like the idea I had the somehow the um, I was worried would um how the audience uh, will react but 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 you know and in, in the end I think it's it functions like a crossroad for the viewing of the movie from that point you can see the movie still as a let's call it adventure of a family because you don't know you still can hope it will change um, you can see the movie as a, a requiem for the family because you know the end. Um, but you can also see the movie as, because I'm acting in the movie, about you can see the movie like an um, example of what somebody do with his trauma in a way. So I think it's really multi-layered, the, the viewing. And what I like most is that in this scene, there is some love. And some, and then the uh, audience can come back to this love in a way. In the same way, I can go back to my real brother when I think about it. I didn't want to put it on the end because I was had the feeling it was some kind of rushing to a happy end. You know, now is everything okay? 
Uh, so I did. I, I I wanted to avoid this, and generally I had the feeling the whole f- movie is a movie about asymmetry, asymmetry in a way that you can invest a lot and still can uh, cannot help somebody will you will lose somebody, and then I had the feeling the form of the film has also been in a way asymmetric. There has you know there, there there must be some some kind of diversion on the form. So somehow from those points. Um, the scene develops, um, but yes, it was always the question uh, how. But the readers reacted very good on it, so I was in a way, and we were all together somehow sure that that scene has to be at that point. And when you think, uh, even just um, generally at that point, the point is logical in a way. It's like the end of the introduction of the film. It's like the twentieth minute when usually the viewer uh, got all those dramatic ropes. Together, you know what is the movie about, what will can somebody lose. But here it happens in a way, but even you know, in a in a in a in a special way, I would say. So um so I think that was that was that was the um, that thought, was the theory behind it. Yes. I think it's always funny how we actually didn't rehearse that scene as much as the other scenes. Mm. Um, because yeah, we somehow we felt at the first time it 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 happened it worked it, it works yeah. yes for both of us and there's a strange thing i usually i have a problem with watching myself i mean that's i'm i'm not the only actor that's like a thing but uh, during this process i i kind of lost that that problem i don't i don't have it anymore and this is the only movie i i could watch so many times i think i watched it almost 10 times by now and it, i find it why why is is that uh, i and i always get a feeling uh, after okay the first two times i saw it it was hard and and emotional but after w- words i always felt uh, a soothing sensation and by now i kind of f- feel it's because of that scene um and uh I I always feel that like it's not me, and I so I I always get a kind of soothing sensation when I watch that mm-hmm. scene. It's kind of I always can't wait for it to come, and then yeah. Did I tell you that? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But uh, yes, I think uh, yeah. There's um... and it was technically challenging for the shooting, but mm-hmm. uh, uh, but either way, uh, it was so emotional. Even when while we were shooting, that the, the whole crew was uh, watching and crying while we, we were um, uh, shooting that scene. Yeah, the scene is like From, a joke, yeah. joke between him and his brother. Yeah, in a way, I mean, a joke in a way that um, I think I really had the urge to speak to my brother in a way. Uh, so I think that's also something from where the scene came. And when you say joke, I, 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 you know, I, I had the feeling I have somehow to destroy the narration because, um, because after such an event in your life, you lose the kind of faith in narration, narration in, in terms that uh, after this, this will happen. And after this, this will. So I somehow wanted um, a revenge or narration and that's that's why I, I think the, also the scene is in because the scene really destroys the the narration and yes sometimes i had a feeling that's a, like a joke that between me and my brother because we are now you know we are in a movie talking about the movie <laughs> but my brother was also a cinematographer so somehow i don't know but i think it's most um love between us but okay in love there's always a joke I mean, or something funny, and yes, and I think the scene somehow echoes through the film, echoes in a way that we see that we see the shirt a few times, and we see the shirt also at, at the end. So somehow the scene, yes, it's echo a good, good, good yeah. word, yes. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's it's such a beautiful scene, and and I think the film is as a whole just really exudes this love within this dynamic and these relationships, and it's it's such a wonderful and affecting film. So congratulations on on everything with creating this movie, and thank you so much to the three of you for sharing all of this. I so appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much.